الرحمن الرحيم بشكر الاستاذ الدكتور هاشم عياد على التقديمه ليا وانا مش غريب على كليه طب طنطا لان انا كنت طالب وكنت امتياز وكنت نايب وتعلمت هنا في طنطا النهارده ماي برزنتيشن توداي از اباوت ذا انتيرو سكورينج ان برومننت ايرز Uh, actually, Broman and Tier, we have uh, assigned names for the, this disease, Bromena urus, prominent ears, protruding ears, bat ear, elephant ear, dumbo ear, and young ears. Prominent ear actually have a normal chondrocutaneous component with, abno with an abnormal architecture that can be molded digitally to a normal shape. Projection from the temporal scale for more than 17 to 20 millimeter is considered prominent ears. Prominent ear actually is the one of the most common ear deformity, representing 93, uh, 39% and usually occurs bilaterally and characterized by the cephalo-auricular angle is greater than 34 degrees as mentioned by uh, Professor Manzan in 1989. According to Brand in 1977, and according uh, that he stated that anything that interfere with the development of the intrinsic architecture of the ear will result in the prominent ear. Absence of the antihelical fold is the most common uh, deformity. Actually, hereditary play a significant role in the uh, disease. Uh, Rogers in 1986 showed that the hereditary and the morphological, anatomic and genetic interrelation between the three types of microtia, constriction and prominent ears. Anatomy. The average height of the ear is ranging from 60 to 65 millimeter in the longitudinal diameter and 35 millimeter in transverse diameter and the ear achieve the full growth about age of five to six years this photo show the normal anatomy of the ear with the helix, anti-helix, with the two crura superficial, the th uh, superior and the inferior crura, the tragus and endotragus and intertragus area, the scapha, the bule, and the conca. And show the normal projection of the ear from the skull from 17 to 20 millimeter. And this is a normal shape of the ear with the vertical and transverse uh, line. And we show the upper third, middle third, and lower third will be the same size. And the cephalo-auricular angle with the transverse diameter, 35, 37 degrees. And with the vertical line is 20 degrees. Actually, the goal of surgery is to correct the protrusion, which mainly in the upper third of the ear, and to show the visibility of the helix and anti-helix, and in the same time to have the smooth appearance of the anti-helical fold and avoid any sharp projection. And in the same time, we shouldn't disturb the post-auricular sulcus, avoid the plaster down look of the auricle. Preoperative antibiotics, infiltration with adrenaline, skin in excision, in a dumbbell bill shape.
And this is the excised skin. This is the excised skin. It's an interoperative view exposing the cartridge. And this is the anterior pericondrium. And this is the scored cartridge, anterior pericondrium and scoring, anterior scoring of the cartridge from the anterior aspect. After wound closure, post-operative bulky dressing to maintain the auricle in a proper position after scoring. Most operative care, the dressing will keep for 10 days or two weeks. Antibiotics and analgesia. And after removal of the dressing, the patient is instructed to use a, a broad headband for one month, especially at night, to keep the reconstructed auricle in a normal position. And after two weeks, we can start with washing of the hair and ear, and we'll start the normal activity after two weeks. Some patient will experience some numbness at the auricular area, and this will be improved after a few weeks. And during that time, we should instruct the patient not to use a hair dryer or hot water, otherwise he may develop local burn. Some cases, this is before. You see the protrusion here in the main in the upper third and post operative. Another patient, we see that the loss of the anti helical fold and post operative after reconstruction. See the protrusion from the occiput. Loss of the antihelix. Now the two crora and the antihelical fold. And you see the smoothness of the antihelical fold. Before and after the antihelical fold. Before, after, before and after. Before and after. Before and after. before and after. You see here the protrusion and after. The anti-helix before and after. So in summary, Careful handling of the uh, and meticulous hemostasis are crucial issues to minimize the post-operative complication. And we know the plastic surgery procedure, any minimal complication post-operative will change your results and will affect the patient's satisfaction about the outcome of the procedure. Also, we should consider minimal skin excision to avoid any hypertrophic scars at the site of your wound.
surgical correction actually done in the preschool age to avoid some psychological trauma that might happen with the uh, patient. Actually, the procedure and steps are easy learning technique and it is reliable and adjustable, giving the natural appearance of the ear with aesthetic degree of normal protrusion. Thank you very much.